This is a small project, and since it's the season for creating gifts for friends and loved ones, it's an excellent opportunity to craft something unique and personal. I'm going to try to squeeze this one in before the end of the year, so I'll need to get going to get it done. So let's gather everything we need and get started on this CNC carved terrain map milled in a custom veneer stock. I've done this the hard way in the past, and I'm thankful that someone has put together a fantastic website to make it as easy as possible. And when I say somebody, I mean Chris Harding, the Department of Atmospheric Sciences at Iowa State University, and Frank Hassett from the Kansas Geological Survey. Check out their web app, and with the link in the description, pick out a map for yourself to 3D print or CNC mill, and maybe even make some minor changes to make it a unique GIF for someone. I've used other websites for the creation of sections of meshes that I had to individually piece together to get the same end product, which is a lot more work and frustration. The options and preview features make this site a pleasure to use. The primary use for these is 3D printing, but they work for CNC just as well. And they've included high resolution options for that case. As easy as they have made this, I'll have to find another way to overcomplicate it on my end. And I think we all saw that coming. The extra details make this project unique and interesting, but I'll get into that later. I've run some tests on this technique and found some features can be hard to pick out after milling, and I plan to resolve that in a couple of ways. First, I need to select the area I want to create the contour of. Dial back the transparency so I can screen capture an image of the roads on the map, and experiment with the options for vertical extension Z-scale. I found the times two option worked the best for me for this particular section. Create a preview, generate the STL, import the mesh into Fusion 360, and modify and convert the mesh into something I can work with. I found that the 1 quarter or 3 eighths tool does the job pretty well, and the top facing ridges are perfectly pronounced. Where you lose resolution are the lower facing contours that are smaller than the bit diameter. I invested in a tapered end mill to help me achieve greater detail, allowing me to refine the intricate designs and enhance the overall look of projects like these. It has a 1 16th ball at the end and tapers to 1 quarter at about a 5 degree angle. I added it to my tool library using the tapered mill selection and added my tool's dimensions. Just in case anyone's wondering, I'll leave a link to the tool in the description below. I'm preparing a blank for this by laminating thickness sanded pieces in an alternating pattern. I glued them up and thickness out the block first to establish the stock size I'll need for setting up the milling tool paths. This is an absolute ton of work. First rough sawing out each slice, joining each of them on edge and then thickness sanding each veneer and finally gluing it all together. I'll save you the trouble of watching me thickness sand for hours and show you the end result. These are alternating layers of basswood and African mahogany, just what I had lying around at about the right size with good contrast. I can rough out the blank to the stock dimensions in my Fusion 360 cam setup and adjust the cam setup to the thickness of the material I created. I'll rough mill out as much as possible with a half inch end mill, and then I'll follow it up with an operation set with rest machining from the previous operation with a quarter inch end mill. Then I can run the scallop operation with my new tapered bit, and finally cut out the outer profile again with a half inch end mill. This looks great so far, but I'd like to add the roads to make these features more identifiable. My first idea was to create a sketch and draw the lines of the roads using a spline then project those splines into the top surface of the map profiles. It was a nice plan, but it didn't work. 
There are way too many triangles making up the fine details of these features, and Fusion stalls and crashes while trying to process all that data. My second attempt was to reduce a copy of the mesh, and I started by isolating the top surfaces from the sides and bottom faces by creating offset faces and slicing them with the plane cut tool. I could then reduce the mesh and project to a surface without so many features. This worked, but it bogged down Fusion significantly and made the file very difficult to work with. So it was a step in the right direction, but not quite what I was looking for. I finally found a method that was much more simple and didn't cause so many problems. In the manufacturing environment, I found the project operation and selected the high end resolution contour and the sketch lines I had created earlier. And they worked perfectly. I milled these projected paths at about a negative 30 thousandths offset. And they look great in simulation. So let's get this thing on the machine and get started making a mess. I was concerned about the length of some of these operations, but they ran flawlessly. The first operation was short, and the second just slightly longer than the first. The scallop operation, on the other hand, is very long, but I got it down to just over one hour. The profile and projection cuts are quick and easy, but slightly stressful watching that tiny in-mail track around these contours for 37 seconds. 
which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you're on the final operation, hoping nothing goes wrong to destroy many hours of work, preparing the stock, milling these intricate details, it definitely adds some stress to the equation. After sanding and finishing, this looks great, and it's ready to give to my pops, who I know will love it. It's one of, if not his favorite place. Whether you CNC these or 3D print them, what you end up with can be a personalized gift and an absolute one-of-a-kind object. I've uploaded this Fusion 360 file to my Patreon. You can find it with the link in the description. If you want to dig into the details of my CAD and CAM, use my tools, feeds, speeds, and CAD techniques, or just make something like this for yourself. Looking through these files might provide the inspiration or knowledge you're looking for. Give it a try and let me know how it went. And thanks for watching.